Following 16 years, 22 trophies, and 26 red cards, Sergio Ramos's time at Real Madrid is finally coming to an end. Having been signed by Real Madrid from Sevilla for 27 million euros in 2005, a fee which made him the most expensive teenage footballer of all time at that time, Ramos's time in the Spanish capital could rarely be described as uneventful. His 671 appearances in the famous white shirt of Madrid is the fourth most of any player since the club was founded in 1902, and the most of any player this century. Remarkably, given the fact that Ramos has played almost exclusively as either a right-back or centre-back at the Bernabeu, he also ranks 19th in the club's all-time scoring charts, tied with Ivan Zamorano on 111 goals for Real Madrid, and just three goals behind two-time Ballon d'Or winning club legend Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima. There can be no doubt, therefore, that what Sergio Ramos has accomplished within both the club and international game in terms of his consistency, longevity, and becoming one of the most decorated defenders in the history of the game, is outstanding. I doubt that you would find even the most embittered of Barcelona fans, or the most scorned Portuguese supporter, who would disagree with that fact. There is another, slightly more contentious talking point, one which has been bubbling away beneath the surface for the last two or three years, but has well and truly erupted ever since the news of Ramos's Real Madrid departure was confirmed, and that is the claim, or question, of whether he is either the greatest centre-back or the greatest defender of all time. Both are pretty bold claims or questions, and as Ramos himself made clear on social media, the mere fact of people asking those questions is high praise indeed. Subscribers and regular viewers will know that every now and then I take a break from making obscure documentaries and lists and throw in my two pennies worth on a specific issue that is being talked about a lot, typically on social media and that I have an opinion on. I have even created a playlist dedicated entirely to those types of videos should you have a particular penchant for discovering my unrequested opinions on issues as varied as Gareth Southgate, the disappearance of flair players in modern football, and, most recently, whether it is more difficult to win the Euros than the World Cup. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the video description, if I can remember, and in the end screen at the end of this video, since I suspect you are all brimming with excitement, ready to check out some of those masterpieces if you haven't seen them already. Today's video is all about one man, though. The messy kicking, Puyol pushing, goal scoring, trophy winning, and defence marshalling supremo that is Sergio Ramos, a man who is currently being heavily linked with a move to PSG, a club who know a thing or two about signing footballing legends on free transfers in the autumn, or even later, of their careers. I don't tend to get too bogged down with stats on this channel, unless I feel as though they are entirely relevant, tell some kind of story, or are just bizarre. In the case of Sergio Ramos, some of his stats tick all three boxes. Ramos has the joint second most La Liga wins to his name of any player in history, tied with Ike Casillas, and trailing only Lionel Messi. He holds the record for the most goals scored by a defender in a single season in one of Europe's top five leagues during the 21st century, and he is tied with Lionel Messi for the record of scoring in the most consecutive La Liga seasons with both men having scored in an incredible 17 successive campaigns. Ramos has the goal-scoring record of a half-decent centre-forward, despite spending most of his career playing as a centre-back, as I covered in a video taking a look at seven forwards who scored fewer goals throughout their careers than Ramos, and whilst many of those goals have come from the penalty spot, there is a reason that Ramos is the man Real Madrid entrusted with penalty-taking duties following Cristiano Ronaldo's departure, and Ramos was still incredibly prolific, for a defender before being put on penalties, due to his remarkable aerial prowess and threat from both corners and free kicks. Ramos isn't the highest scoring defender of all time, but there aren't too many defenders ahead of him. The current Barcelona boss Ronald Koeman is in a world of his own on that front, having scored a staggering 253 goals, which is almost twice as many goals as Ramos, though Koeman did play a little bit of football in midfield. Daniel Passarella, Fernando Hierro, Laurent Blanc, and Graham Alexander are the only other defenders, as far as I can tell, to have scored more goals than Ramos, though Blanc actually began his career in attacking midfield, and Alexander obviously didn't play quite at the same level as the others for much of his career, and Ramos is just one goal behind him, having played far fewer games. 
Whilst the fact that Ramos has spent his entire career playing as a defender makes these stats incredibly impressive, it also makes them a little less relevant when it comes to discussions about whether he is the greatest defender or centre-back of all time, given that scoring goals isn't actually his main aim, but rather just an added bonus. I think the answer to the question of whether Ramos is one of the greatest goal-scoring defenders of all time is self-evidently yes. Very few defenders have ever scored more than him, and even fewer who spent their entire careers playing in defence, as Ramos by and large has done. Ramos's defensive credentials have been a topic of debate right throughout his playing days. When he first broke through at Sevilla, it was immediately apparent that Ramos was a special talent with fantastic drive and energy down the right flank. Hence, why Real Madrid paid 27 million euros for him at the age of only 19. As with so many modern day fullbacks though, some people were less convinced by Ramos's defensive talents, considering him to be hot-headed and a little rash at times. It would be fair to say that Ramos never lost that fiery temper or tendency to blur the line between aggression and downright recklessness. It would be remiss of me not to repeat the fact that Sergio Ramos has received 26 red cards throughout the course of his career, which, again, whilst not a record, there aren't too many players to have received more. In a discussion of the greatest defenders or centre-backs of all time, that has to count against him. There are four main reasons why a footballer is typically sent off. Serious foul play, violent conduct, denying the opposing team a goal or clear goal-scoring opportunity by unlawful means, later changed to deliberately doing so, and committing two bookable offences, resulting in a red card. Nine times out of ten, it boils down to one of two things. Either a player has lost their head and done something stupid, or a mistake has been made and, in an act of desperation, a player has attempted to course correct and has made the situation even worse. You could argue, in very rare circumstances, such as Luis Suarez's handball against Ghana at the 2010 World Cup, given that Asmo Jan failed to convert his subsequent penalty, that some red cards could be justified in the same way a player might take a tactical yellow card for halting an opponent in the midst of a dangerous counter-attack. However, these instances are rare, and having watched a compilation video of all of Ramos's red cards on YouTube whilst planning this video, I must say that very few would fall into that category. For comparison, from my research at least, I believe that Paolo Maldini only ever received three red cards, having played a great deal more matches than Ramos. Meanwhile, I could only find two competitive fixtures in which Franco Baresi was sent off. I'm giving those two examples since I think Maldini and Baresi are fairly universally considered to be two of the greatest defenders of all time. Another fine example, John Charles, was never sent off, and legend has it that he never received even so much as a caution. I think that has to count against Ramos, since it does speak to a certain rashness and thoughtlessness to his game, which has been too frequent a feature to be written off as a mere moment of madness. It is a pattern, and one from which he has never really grown out of. In the interest of balance, it should be noted that Roy Keane received the joint most red cards in the history of the English game, and is still rightly considered to be one of the greatest players to have ever played in the Premier League. So, ill-discipline certainly doesn't disprove greatness. It is just a minor blot on your copybook, and it's also worth noting that Keane's joint record in England of 13 red cards is still half the figure amassed by Ramos. At this point, I feel obliged to just come out and say that I do not believe that Sergio Ramos is the best defender in the history of the sport, albeit that doesn't quite answer the initial question. My personal opinion is that Franz Beckenbauer is the greatest defender of all time, and even if you don't consider Beckenbauer to be a centre-back, which I think is understandable, there are still a number of players that I would rank as being superior centre-backs to Sergio Ramos, whether that be Franco Baresi, Paolo Maldini, or Alessandro Nesta, and that's just the Italian players. All three, or four of those players that I just mentioned, had so few identifiable weaknesses. Positionally, tactically, both on and off the ball, they were routinely faultless, particularly during their best years. I don't believe that the same could be said for Ramos. You could well argue that he was superior in certain aspects of his game, particularly in the air, but all round, if I'm being totally honest, I think there is very little comparison. However, the especially observant among you may have noticed 
that I said best rather than greatest. And I do believe that there is a difference between the two. The best centre-back of all time, I think, is the player who was simply the best at football and the best at playing the role of centre-back. It is a measure of talent and of performance. Greatest, however, implies to me something greater than talent and performance. It brings in factors like a player's aura, their longevity, what they won, their role in certain successes, and the influence that they had upon the players around them. On this front, and by this measure, I think Ramos performs a lot better. His role, particularly in Real Madrid's success over the last couple of decades, but also Spain's, has been gargantuan. Other than Cristiano Ronaldo, Ramos was the defining player at Real Madrid for a generation. I still don't believe that he is the greatest defender or centre-back of all time because it is not as though Franz Beckenbauer or Paolo Maldini, to use just two examples, were exactly lacking in greatness. Beckenbauer won literally every trophy going at Bayern Munich and with the German national team, winning the European Cup three times, which is once fewer than Ramos, but also collecting two Ballon d'Ors. An award Ramos has never really come close to winning during the Messi-Ronaldo era, a sixth-place finish in 2017, constituting his best-ever performance. Not that I think the Ballon d'Or is a particularly accurate gauge of these types of things, as those of you who watched my video all about football's myriad of stupid and corrupt award ceremonies will know well. There is a distinction between Maldini and Ramos in the greatness stakes in terms of international accomplishments, with Maldini never having won either the Euros or the World Cup, whilst Ramos won both, though Maldini did win five European Cups or Champions Leagues, which is even more than Ramos. You could argue that Ramos has had greater longevity than Beckenbauer, though that didn't stop the German winning everything before swanning off to the Big Apple, but he will need a pretty impressive next five years to match Paolo Maldini on that front, who was still one of the most adept and impressive defenders in world football, even into his 40s. There seems to be a trend, or an urge, which has become increasingly common in recent years, towards hyperbole and having short memories in football. Virgil van Dijk had one outstanding season at Liverpool before people were asking whether he was the greatest Premier League centre-back of all time. When Cristiano Ronaldo scored a brace against Hungary in the Euro 2020 group stage, a number of people began to crown him as the greatest international footballer of all time. Following N'Golo Kante's midfield masterclasses in the final and semi-final of the Champions League as Chelsea won the competition, people didn't just stop at saying that he should win the Ballon d'Or, despite not even being nominated for the Premier League Player of the Season award, ESPN, actually ran a feature questioning whether he was the best midfielder of the century. Clearly, Virgil van Dijk, Cristiano Ronaldo and N'Golo Kante are all fantastic footballers. But you can just say that. The statement... Jack Grealish was superb for Aston Villa last season, or this season, is perfectly adequate, without the addition of, but was he better than prime Diego Maradona? No, 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 no. Angolo Kante can be the man of the match in Chelsea's two biggest games of the season, and rightfully be crowned as a seriously special talent, without the need to compare him to Xavi, Andres Iniesta, Patrick Vieira, Roy Keane, Andrea Perlo, and Zinedine Zidane, and to claim that he is better than the lot of them. In much the same way, as now that Sergio Ramos's time at Real Madrid has come to an end, reflecting upon 16 years of remarkable success, inspirational leadership, and a pretty absurd number of goals for a man who plays in his position, he should of course be heralded as a Real Madrid legend, a Spain legend, and an outstanding footballer who often reserved his finest performances for the occasions and stages in which they mattered the most. If there was one particular compliment that I had to pay Sergio Ramos, it would certainly be that he very rarely froze on the biggest of stages, and he had an exceptionally useful habit of turning up at the most crucial of moments and in the most consequential of fixtures. In that respect, Ramos was like the Real Madrid team that he starred in for a number of years in its purest, most distilled form. The club never really dominated Spanish football during Ramos' time at the club, winning just five of a possible 16 La Liga titles during that time, meanwhile Barcelona won nine. And the only time they managed to win back-to-back -back La Liga titles during Ramos' time at the Bernabeu was in the 2006-07 and 2007-08 seasons, before he was quite such a senior member of the squad and was still playing most of his football at right-back. 
But in the Champions League, the Euros, and the World Cup, Ramos was the man. In the 2014 Champions League final, Real Madrid trailed their Madrid rivals Atletico 1-0 in the 93rd minute, when Ramos towered above everyone to head home from a corner and take the game to extra time, where Real Madrid would win 4-1, kick-starting an era in which the club won four Champions League titles in just five seasons. Two years later, when Real Madrid faced Atletico Madrid in the Champions League final once again, it was Ramos once again who scored Real Madrid's only goal in regulation time, before dispatching his penalty in the shootout as Los Blancos regained their European crown. Ramos won the Man of the Match award in both finals. Real Madrid hadn't won the Champions League prior to that 2014 success for the last 13 years. Without him, who knows how many Champions League titles the likes of Luka Modric, Gareth Bale, and Cristiano Ronaldo would have won at Real Madrid. It certainly wouldn't have been four, and it's not inconceivable that it could have been none. That is more than enough of a legacy in of itself. Does it mean that Ramos was better than Beckenbauer, Maldini, or Baresi? Personally, I don't believe that it does, but we don't need to set the bar that high. You can be a great player without needing to be the greatest of all time. Football is at least 160 years old. There is no shame in not being the greatest player to have ever played in a position that tens of thousands of footballers have played in over the years. What really matters is the moments you create, the memories that you imprint in people's minds, and the legacy that you leave behind. And on all three of those counts, few players would score as highly as Sergio Ramos. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I will point out that I'm saying Sergio instead of Sergio because either way I will annoy either Spanish or English people with my pronunciation and I figured I might as well try and get it as close to how he would pronounce his own name and uh, the same goes for all players' names in these videos. I tried to get them right even if I fail on uh, a majority of occasions. But yeah, thank you all as ever for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Apparently it helps with the algorithm. And make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. Oh, and you can also find me on social media, on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so.